Hello and welcome back to our KSP career and in today's episode we shall be designing a Minmus lander designed to also fulfill one specific contract do a supply run to station Minmus science station mark one so the idea of this lander will be obviously science so I'm gonna accept this contract there we go accepted and as I glance through other contracts, I don't know if there will be more. Gather surface, deploy seismic sensor science from the surface of Minmus. Oh, uh, we want to send us science from data from the surface of Minmus. I guess that's possible. However, it required a deployed seismic sensor science on Minmus. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. So yeah, let's trot along. Leave the launch pad. Well, obviously that I'm gonna take. All right, let's design the lander. And I want to go with a little bit, you know, SpaceX design. So I'm gonna be using this uh, capsule, uh, actually Rodan command pod. I actually like that one better. Yes, so I'm gonna be going with a SpaceX vibe. I think this is Rodan pod is actually a Dragon capsule, I assume. So let's close, uh, increase the data and sample capacity of it. Uh, let's check the inventory, show upgraded stats, okay, closing the gap, or obviously the nose cone. Also make sure that we have shielding and all the other stuff that we need. Uh, then we want to be putting a mini, you know, you know, cargo bay, service pod, call it whatever you want to. And I'm just now checking to see if I can find something to put in the inventory. Yeah, I'm looking basically as uh, on a cargo part from SpaceX, or Tundra as they call it. All right, so no bueno. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be placing uh, some sort of, oh, storage locker. Cardboard box, yes, that's the best one. Okay, so I'm gonna be placing some explosives. I'm gonna be placing some more things in the capsule where it is uh, from the inventory system. I want the extra data. Where is this boom box? There we go. I want the actually the EVA repair thingy. I don't know where to find it actually. Boom box, well, all the wonderful stuff that we have. There we go. EVA repair kit, that's what I needed. Exactly. All right, then I can put maybe the, seism the seismic sensor, but I don't know if this will be enough. Ah, oh, we can try it nevertheless. All right. So inventory, lights, camera, action, whatnot. I'm taking a couple of them, but uh, yeah, you never know. Right, so Rodan command pod. I want to make sure that I have pressure control, water recycler, and I don't know for what reason, but I don't think I have scrubber. And uh, later on, now I'm in post-production, I checked and it was mainly due to the reason that I didn't have the basic command pods. So later on, sorry, spoiler alert, alert I've actually, in the tech tree, I have unlocked this uh, when the command pod was built and then I just edited the command pod to have scrubbers just in case you were wondering later on when I will be flying it, what happened. So, <clears throat> we want to design a lander, as I said, this big tank with these two engines should be enough, and I want to be housing a lot of experiments. So, with that thing being said, I want this, you know, cargo bay-ish, and I want the landing legs, which will obviously be these SpaceX landing legs. I mean, I really like them, they look, look kind of cool. All right, and then let's first assemble the pod, then we test the pod or the lander itself, and then we shall be putting some more stuff. Now, obviously, I think this is a fuel tank. I also need some sort of, yes, the, how do you call it? The SAS controller, correct. Now we have here also the container inventory. There are plenty of stuff to be putting, but actually this is not what I need. I need the cargo bay, yes this guy where I can actually cram stuff in. I'm gonna rotate it to the side because I want to have my ladder on in front of the capsule. 
So, materials based science, there we go. We put a couple of these. Then we put the uh, Kerbal Engineer. Then a couple of science experiments. Actually, I'm gonna put those on the inside. Yes, I think that's the better case. So, I want everything to be shielded. Well, you know, for obvious reasons. Okay, then let's see. We are gonna put Gravioli. I mean, <clears throat> I've did this, as I said, before I actually knew how Kerbalism works. So I just jam-packed it full of experiments. Which is a little bit, you know, wrong when playing with Kerbalism. For the standard KSP it works, so just a disclaimer here, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> starting episode, I think 33 or 34, I'm genuinely going into making Kerbalism work as intended. Promise, guys. Now, like I said, I'm cramming everything here and I've put even the small, you know, surface experiments, seismic hammer. That could be actually good for, you know, testing the seismic properties. Maybe I, maybe I should think about it. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I haven't checked it. However, what I need now are ladders. Yes, ladders. There we go. I'm going to be placing these fellas, some of them, here. So I can enter the command pod, then another set here, and then I'm going to be, going to be placing the big ones so that they can overlap nicely and allow me to get onto the surface of Minmus. Yeah, like I said, we're going to Minmus. So, this is also a resupply mission and at the same time it's a mission to uh, get the crap load of science that the Minmus has to offer, obviously. Right, so sa increase the sample capacity. I'm increasing pretty much everything because here I have no idea what I'm doing. All right. So, uh, yes, solar panels. I really should get those deployable solar panels, shouldn't I? I mean, because these ones just deploy and I just throw them away. It's wasting perfectly good money. Alright, so, restock plus. Now, in this episode, actually, I still have the remote tech. I'm gonna get rid of it because of this science sending, because, yeah, it doesn't work. Honestly, guys, it doesn't work with Kerbalism. I tried. I want to make it happen. It just doesn't work. It's uh, It messes up with the antenna ranges and this big antennas were thought to have 200 gigameters. Once I removed it, they had 80 million meters. So as a relay. So, you know, it's not fully thought out. These two mods are colliding. Sad to say it because I love playing with both of them. All right, so we have the lights. We're gonna put them here. Then I want to be using RCS build aid because this guy will need to be able to dock. And the Rodan command pod obviously has its own thrusters, which I think is great, but I need to add a couple more thrusters just to be, you know, nicely put. Okay, I was here looking for the scrubbers. I wasn't sure why we didn't have any, but in the end I've decided, okay, I'm gonna be putting a couple more stuff in the road on command pod. Let's put pressure control, water recycler, and waste processor. Okay, fair enough. RCS thrusters, yes. I want to be placing them somewhere where they will be making, oh, a difference. Hold on, there we go. Oh, can I place them like this? Yeah, that works. Perfect. Come on, there we go. Okay. So, that thing being said, I could actually... There we go. Alright, perfect. Now, let's... I'm actually thinking we should probably be testing this, but let's first let's place the two drag shoots. And two drogue shoots, so the two regular shoots and the two drogue shoots, right. There we go, they're supposed to be slowing down the capsule while it's descending. So with that thing said, let's say, let's put some action groups, custom 10 will be the ladders, then custom 5 will be the cargo bay, usually one would be the antenna and two should be the solar panels, yeah, there we go. Communitron antenna and two is the solar panel, three is the high gain antenna. There we go, I, that's my standard thing. Now, let's test this. 
And as you can tell, the legs are really wobbly. I have no idea why, but it feels like, you know, shake it a baby. Okay, testing. Antennas work, cargo pods work, um, you know, this thing works. Ladders, and I want to make sure that the ladders, that basically my carbonauts can climb down the ladders all the way down. Because historically I didn't have jetpacks and kerbals couldn't get down for the life of it. Okay. Toggle the hammer. Collect the seismic data and let's see, there we go. It's hammering on midair. That's beautiful. Very useful. See? Alright. Perfectly. That thing being said, now let's check the other guy. Collect laser data. It does some scans and then it collects laser data. This is really important because there's a good chance I'll probably forget about it in the Kerbalism later on. That's, that would be so typically me. All right, that being said, we can transfer the data here, or at least the ones that we have, and then we can actually stop wobbling. I really want to fix this wobbly legs. Let me see what I can do about it. Okay, so let's get our Kerbal out and see if we can manage to get Stefan Kruchkin all the way down so that he can, you know, disembark the vessel. And that's kind of important. He is shaking! Alright. Well, apparently it's working as intended. Good. Okay, grab it and get up. In the background, I should really have the music, you know, shake it a baby now, shake it a baby. Yeah, twist and shout, whatever. So now, let's get into it and let's see if we can fix the wobbly legs. All right, so after boarding the capsule, Advanced um, reaction wheel. Toggle torque. That doesn't have to do anything with the legs. Okay, let's check the legs then. Landing gear shits. The stabilized. Override. Hold on. Landing leg stress. Deploy shielded. I wanted to thrash it, but let me just try playing with here. Spring strength. You don't say. We fixed it, guys. Amazing. Beautiful. All right. I'm happy. Time to design the rest of the rocket. Right. So I just needed to put the leg strength up and that's it. So guys, if you have a wobbly SpaceX legs, I think you just need to increase the strength and that's it. As simple as that. Right, so let's put <clears throat> the engine, let's put this uh, Ghidorah tank, let's see, Hecate liquid hydrogen engine, oh it's too small. You know, the one thing that I dislike about these engines being small, it's the engine bell, because of it, I mean, you cannot have the shroud, I would like to have an interstage or some sort, maybe, yeah, maybe that would be the way forward. Alright, so this is a transfer vehicle. This is actually getting us to Minmus. And then we need to be adding the launch vehicle. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Ghidorah. That's the big one. Or well, this is, is this Bagora? I'm not exactly sure. It's huge anyway. However, thrust to weight is 1.31 with it. I'm just making sure that we have everything set up correctly. The total delta V is 6.9 thousand, which is decent. I'm though contemplating against a smaller launch vessel. Ah, uh, maybe no, maybe not. Well, let's keep it. And then we put like this. And then do we have like caps somewhere? Aerodynamic nose cone? No, no. Ah, we can keep those if push comes to shove. Or these, they look like eyes. 
Not to use another acronym for it. All right, so yeah. Let's see how it looks. Launch clamps. There we go. That's one mighty tall rocket. And a total of 7.3 thousand meters per second. I'm actually thinking I'd rather go with Tundra, the standard one. It's not that tall and after all, it should be more than sufficient. Let's see. After all, we are just going to Minma. 7.3 thousand meters per second should be enough to get us to Duna, no problemo. Even to Eve and maybe even further out, so... Yeah, I'm gonna keep it like this, because this feels like it's not ecstatically long. So, yeah. <clears throat> and as I said, I wanted to unlock the simple command modules, mainly due to the scrubber and life support because that's something that I've been missing. It didn't work, want to work without it. And now I understand why. So yeah, research it. Good. There is still time for it needing to process stuff and whatnot, but then again, yeah, it will be just two days. So once that's done, it has been processed. And that means that our Minmus lander can be just edited briefly to make sure that we have the scrubber. Where is it? Scrubber! There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, so I think that will actually basically just checking the final Kerbalism parameters, perpetual, everything is a couple of years or at least 54 days. So we should have plenty of everything and that means that we could launch. Beautiful. I'm actually just thinking maybe I'm gonna be putting a couple of tanks, just, you know, some extra tanks small of oxygen and some extra tanks of um, food, just to be on the safe side if we get stranded. But that's it for this episode. Smash that like button and I will be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.